The civil registry department is the legal authority responsible for the registration of births, deaths, national IDs, citizenship, marriages, livestock brands, and issuance of travel documents. Civil registrations are conducted in accordance with various acts of parliament, regulations, and statutory instruments. Civil registrations generate documentation that supports an individual's right to recognition as a person before the law and acknowledges their formal relationship with the state. The documents are crucial in the life cycle of an individual and they contribute to the social, political, and economic development of a nation. The civil registry department therefore plays a pivotal role in complementing government efforts in the attainment of Vision 2030 through provision of security, of, sorry, of secure vital civil registration documents. In order to improve accessibility of vital civil registration and travel documents, the department has devised the strategies through computerization and decentralization of services for the benefit of both citizens and non-citizens of Zimbabwe. In that vein, the department has decentralized issuance of vital civil registration documents to all the 10 provinces, 62 districts, and 206 sub-offices countrywide. Regarding travel documents, the department has partnered Gasu Pasaulis for the issuance of electronic passports and accelerated service delivery. Ladies and gentlemen, the introduction of the electronic passport will go a long way in enhancing security of the department, thereby, thereby also assisting in ensuring security of the nation, bringing convenience to members of the public and facilitating ease of doing business. I think we are all aware, Honorable Minister, that uh, our previous service charter used to mention that an ordinary passport turnaround is one month. One month be later became two months, two months, three months, and so and so. You, I think you, we all know what has been happening. But with the introduction of the electronic passport, the e-passport, the turnaround time for the ordinary passport is seven days. No matter where you are, it is seven days. For the express passport, it is 48 hours. So again, we are saying if you are applying for an electronic express passport from Blah Wire, you should receive it within 48 hours, despite the distance to the production center, which is about 450 kilometers away. The department commenced the issuance of e-passport on the 18th of January, 2022. And to date, Honorable Minister, that is as of the day before yesterday, since January 18, 26,395 e-passports have been produced. And of these, of these 13,886 are female, 12,509 are male. Recently, members of the public have been traveling to Harare. I have witnessed this to apply for e passports because there was no supporting infrastructure for the e passport system in Blawai. Now, I don't expect you to visit Harare for the e passport, but to visit Harare as a tourist center because we also have tourist places. Now, the department has decentralized the issuance of e-passports to Palawai. I encourage you to take this opportunity to apply for travel documents and desist from engaging in border jumping because crocodiles will be waiting for you. <laughs> Honorable Minister, let me say, yes, we have decentralized the e-passport to Palawai but we will further decentralize the e-passport within Bulawayo. They will be having a second passport office by the end of the year. 
So the civil registry department remains committed to improving service delivery for the benefit of all citizens. I thank you. They resume the test here, which is the $30 one, and this is where they check for the person in the secretary system, and they are given the form. Okay. Once this form is his Excellency the President, Comrade Dr. Emerson Tambuzo Munangagwa, launched the e passport for the first time in Zimbabwe. I don't know how many other countries do have the e passport, but I'm, I'm very much informed, I'm, I'm aware that Zimbabwe is probably one of the very few if not one of the two or three. Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today to witness the official opening of the Blawai Province e-passport bio enrollment center. The rollout of the e-passport project started in Arai and Blawai is the second province to have the facility which will be cascaded to other provincial and district centers. I'm glad to inform you that the process of setting up the infrastructure of the issuance of e-passports has now been taken to Wange and Lupani. As we speak right now, work is in progress in Wange and Lupani. In no province. And this will be followed by a similar exercise to the remaining seven provincial offices which should be up and running by the 30th of June this year. I want to call it when we're, when we're having our briefing in there. That is excellent, the president directed us that he wants each and every province in this country to have an e passport enrollment center by 30 June 2022. So I want my colleagues that I still love this job. I enjoy being listened to when I'm standing up here. So no head to roll before mine if this doesn't happen. So, but I, I know we've got a very good marriage with the GP and things are happening as you can see today. As you all, as you may all know, Zimbabwe is a member of the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, which requires that member state, states take necessary measures to ensure the integrity, authenticity and security of travel and identity documents. The introduction of the new generation e-passport is therefore fully compliant with ICAO standards and as enhanced security features to abate fraudulent activities. These key features include electronic cover with, 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 with a chip, personal data of the holder which is embedded on the chip, and each page of the passport chronicles a story about Zimbabwe's rich cultural heritage. You need to get this passport. And of course, major tourist attractions. It also has a second thread fully embedded in inner booklet pages, these enhanced security features will play a major role in combating cross-border organized crime and illegal migration, thereby bringing integrity to our migration system. Somebody was asking, asked me the other day when we were, is it Mlamba Pay? Yes. Border Post? Mlamba Pay. Last two weeks ago, three weeks ago. But what does this e-passport do? What does an e-passport do, honestly? Why should I have one? Why can't I just have my old passport? You can still go ahead and have your old passport. While I'm still at that, by the way, those who had already applied for their old passports, they are still going to receive them. They are still being processed. You will still have an opportunity to use them until they expire. But I'll tell you why now you don't really need to pursue that anymore. If you want to move with the times, like I always do, myself and my colleagues here. The e-passport, over and above the securities that are embedded on the chip, which means it's a more secure passport, it's a more secure document. You cannot easily see the security features 
which are hidden uh, in the budget in the, on, the, on the chip. What it basically means as we go forward, you realize when you travel, when you go overseas, you realize there are those routes, I don't know what they call them, smart routes or whatever they are. That's where the world is going. That's, what te- that's where technology is taking us. What we do very mean with an e-passport is, instead of having troubles talking to an, an immigration officer or immigration officers, your chief, your passport, will be able to identify you as you walk through the cameras and all the technologies that are now available. Because everything is embedded in there. As you walk through a camera, it will recognize who you are. That this one is Jomonia Nikairo. And already he's got, a, he's got a visa for everything. So everything does in a, it happens in a fraction of a second. Catch us of artificial intelligence. And once the validation is done, you may not even notice it. I'm sure you've seen smart gates. The smart gates will open for you to proceed without having to worry about someone who's going to ask for a bribe from you. So as we go forward, you will realize that the machine with the passport, if you still have the machine with the passport, you will probably use a route that will have 500 people in the queue. And those with e-passports will just send through the, uh, the, the, the e-gates. So going forward, we don't want to be left behind. And I want to say something to the president. He told us that when you, when you try and repair a broken, if, for example, if you want to rebuild a house that has collapsed, build better. So as we were trying to deal with the backlog issue, he directed the, us that do better, leap from others, go for the e-passport. And today we have an e-passport in this country. <laughs> Initial e-passport applications will be processed at provincial and a few district centers. Plans are, however, full to decentralize e-passport and roaming services to all districts in our drive to take the services to the people in line with the details of devolution. The program of decentralization uh, to the district level started, started with the establishment of Chitunguiza Passport Office. That was our first one uh, outside high, which is now operational, by the way. The setting up of infrastructure to again establish the e-passport system in Chitunguiza is already at an advanced stage of completion. The decentralization of e-passport services to district level remains a priority for my ministry. I'm aware of the challenges our citizens are experiencing in trying to acquire travel documents. I must assure you, however, that with the decentralization of the e-passport enrollment centers, the long queues that have been witnessed at passport offices will soon be a thing of the past. Now, there's something else that I also discovered as I was touring when I was being shown around. Over and above the e-passport issue, there is also security. I saw cameras. I saw how handsome I was on the cameras. What does that mean? I know we have had problems with corruption. Corruption. I'm not saying you are corrupt. We have had challenges with the people could want a passport and don't pay something for you to get the passport. Now, with those cameras that I saw inside there, if someone asks for some money, just give them. Because that's how we catch them. Because the camera is watching them. It's Big Brother in there. Every corner is covered. So, that will deal with, the, with, with corruption. My ministry is also focused on contributing optimally towards the ease of doing business through the deployment of online platforms which are critical towards the realization of enhanced service delivery. In this regard, my ministry is working on plans to establish an online passport application system for the convenience of the general public. This is at a very advanced stage, and I'm aware that they've already started, started testing the, the, the system. This is the ultimate objective. Yes, we are decentralizing right now by bringing the offices or the enrollment centers closer to the people. But when everything is said and done, the ultimate objective is for people to be able to apply for their passports from the comfort of their homes. That's the best way to decentralize services. People should be able to apply from the, you know, by using their cell phones, using their desktop in the office, from anywhere. And we are already working on that. Once positive gains have been realized in the seamless transition 
to the e-passport. My ministry is simply concerned about criminal elements purporting to be employees or agents of the civil registry department who are defrauding citizens of their hard-earned cash, promising facilitation to acquire e-passports and in other cases, identity documents. I wish to unequivocally state that these bogus individuals do not in any way represent the ministry and we disassociate ourselves from them. Members of the public are urged to approach the civil registry department directly when seeking access to civil registration and to desist from engaging intermediaries. Let me, however, assure you that law enforcement agents will leave no stone until in bringing these criminal elements to book. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot talk about e-passports without mentioning the initial source documents used in the processing of passports, which are birth certificates and national identity documents. According to the Constitution of Zimbabwe, Amendment Number 20, Act 2013, every person has a right to legal identity. My ministry through the Civil Registry Department, therefore, as a constitutional obligation to ensure that every eligible person is bestowed with legal identity. In that vein, I take great pleasure to inform the nation that the Civil Registry Department will be embarking on a nationwide mobile registration exercise from the 1st of April 2022 to 30 September 2022. This exercise will mainly focus on the issuance of births and death certificates and national identity documents. In addition to mobile teams, all static registration offices will remain operational during this period. We've already started preparatory work for this exercise. People have been trained, we've mobilized resources, and as the president is always saying, no one should be left behind. We are going to ensure that we cover each and every part of this country. We are at our backlog sits at around just under a million, less than a million. But we know probably there are some people who haven't even attempted to apply for these documents. So we are targeting at least two million people, more than double the numbers that we know. And in that process, we've also been asked by the president that please make it as easy as possible for Zimbabwe to get their ID, because they are Zimbabweans. So, in that regard, the ministry were meeting a couple of weeks back with the provincial registrars to discuss the challenges that they were facing, or the challenges that people were facing uh, in as far as the requisite documents or information that is required. And they were there for three, four days. They've indicated, they've given us ideas of how to deal with this situation, so we promise our citizens that very soon, I know the HDA is working on an awareness campaign where you will tell, they'll be telling people all about the requirements, but we'll try and, and ensure that they are not prohibited because Zimbabweans must have access to the documents as directed by the president. Ladies and gentlemen, may I take this opportunity to convey my special appreciation to our partner, Gasu Pasulis. Can you please stand up? So that they can see you. I want to thank you not just to our the realization of this day, but most importantly, the fulfillment of our mandate as a minister of ensuring that all citizens have unfettered access to civil registration documents, which has been made possible by you. I thank you. At this juncture, it is my single honor and privilege to declare the Blower e-Passport Bio Enrollment Center officially opened. Okay.